Oh, hey, so this is actually completely normal in quantum mechanics. Let me explain. Hi, I'm Devo Priyo, and I'm a physics PhD student at Duke University in USA. My research involves building a state-of-the-art ion trap quantum computer and applying it to research questions in physics and quantum information. Most people I meet react to quantum mechanics like, oh, that sounds so hard, I could never understand physics or quantum. So in this video, I want to share with you four facts about quantum mechanics that anyone can understand. Plus, tell you some open questions in quantum that even us physicists find challenging. Okay, so let's start with the main ideas of quantum mechanics. One big idea is wave-particle duality, which says that uh, particles like electrons and then light or radiation both behave like particles and waves at the same time or depending on the situation, which is really weird. Like, why would electrons behave like ripples in a pond? When I first heard of this idea in uh, eighth grade, uh, and it was from this animated video by this Dr. Quantum character. I thought, oh, scientists must have messed up somewhere. This is clearly a mistake. There's no way this is possible. But quantum mechanics as a theory has been rigorously tested over the years and decades. And now I've grown up and I'm a quantum physicist. <laughs> How the turntables. So because of this nature, physicists came up with this mathematical framework of quantum mechanics to describe things like particles and waves. We describe these things using wave functions, which are complex valued. And here's the next weird part. A particle can be in multiple states at the same time, a property we call superposition. So let's assume that this particle has two possible states. We'll name them zero and one. So when we're not observing, uh, the particle can be in both states at the same time. But when you measure the particle, the superposition collapses and you only get one possible outcome. Now, the outcome that you measure is random. And the probability that you see either zero or one is described by the wave function of the particle. Like, how crazy is that? So the big question is, why don't we see quantum mechanics at work in everyday life? Well, the wave-like nature of particles is more dominant at small scales or sizes, like atomic or subatomic levels. At larger scales with lots of particles, quantum mechanics is still at work, but the particle-like nature dominates and it becomes more useful to use the rules of classical mechanics to understand the physics of what's happening. Another big idea in quantum mechanics is that energy is quantized, which means that energy comes in bundles rather than a continuous stream. This is kind of like when you go to a shop to buy a shirt, and the shirt, uh, you can find them in sizes small, medium, large, extra large, and you pick the one that's closest uh, to what fits you. In nature too, energy comes in prepackaged bundles called quanta, and that's where the word quantum of quantum mechanics comes from. Einstein was able to explain this theory using the experiment of photoelectric effect, and that's why he won the Nobel Prize. Next, I wanna get more specific and tell you about quantum computers and quantum information. For that, I wanna take you to my lab, so let's go. So if you're enjoying the video so far, please leave a like to let me know. And I'd also love to see your comments about what kind of videos you want me to do next. Welcome to my lab at Duke. Now, quantum computers are very hyped because they promise to break encryption and solve climate crisis and whatnot. But here in reality land, we know that we're still at the baby stages of this research and we have very far to go. Now the basics of quantum computer is this. Qubits or quantum bits have superpositions and their wave functions can be entangled or interfered with each other. And using this, we can solve some problems much better or faster than everyday digital computers. So how do we do this? In our lab, we can precisely control atoms and manipulate their electronic states using lasers. I won't get into too much details in this video, but uh, I wanna show you this is what uh, a single atom or a single ion looks like on our camera. The single ion is precisely controlled inside this vacuum chamber over here. Whenever I show my friends this system, they often ask, so can I get this quantum computer within a laptop someday? And there's so many things in this lab. So which part is the quantum computer exactly? Which is a great question because it's not obvious that for quantum computers, the inputs and outputs are still classical. As in, we feed in classical signals using these desktop computers here which talk to these electronic devices to create superpositions and entanglements. But then when we measure their state, the output is once again just a zero or a one, so classical again. 
And here comes the fundamental challenge of quantum computers. We want the superpositions and entanglements in qubits to be perfect and accurate, which they would be if we just left them alone. For example, the hyperfine qubit that we use in our lab has a lifetime of thousands of years. But we need to be able to interact with our qubits to entangle them and to measure them at the end for quantum computers to actually be useful. And that introduces sources of decoherence because the classical world messes up the quantum information which has energy scales that are really, really small. And therefore qubits lose their quantum information over time scales that are not useful for us to run quantum algorithms. And that is basically why quantum computing is challenging from an experimental physics perspective. But it's a worthy challenge and I believe we're making good progress as a community. Thank you so much for watching. I want to make videos for you about grad school and physics, quantum computing, study abroad, being from Bangladesh in US, what I do outside of school and work that I do in Bangladesh. If you would love to uh, keep watching and supporting my journey, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. And let me know what videos you would want to see from me next.